In this section, you're going to learn how to manage the notification lifecycle with Microsoft Graph. The key aspect to notification lifecycle is to understand how change notification subscriptions work. So that's what we're going to cover in this section. The process to create a subscription to receive a change notification from Microsoft Graph is similar to other requests that you submit to Microsoft Graph. The first step to receiving a change notification from Microsoft Graph is to register an Azure AD application and configure it with the necessary permissions. The app needs the permissions required to do the query in order to return a data set that will be used in the change notification. For example, if you want to be notified when new mail emails are received, your app needs to read emails or it needs the mail.read permission. After creating the Azure AD app, the code in your web app must obtain an access token to submit requests to Microsoft Graph. You should use the same process to obtain an access token for creating and managing change notification subscriptions that you would for any other type of request you send to Microsoft Graph. Next, you're gonna create the notification subscription by submitting an HTTP post to the subscription endpoint. The payload of this request is gonna contain the specifics of the subscription. We'll cover that a little bit later. Now, the next thing when a subscription is created, it, Microsoft Graph is gonna immediately submit an HTTP post to the endpoint registered in the subscription. Now the endpoint that you specify in the subscription request, it must respond within five seconds to tell Microsoft Graph that the subscription endpoint is, a valid, is valid and working. And this request includes a value in the URL as a query parameter. Your confirmation response must take the value from the query parameter and return it as a string in the body of the response. Change notification subscriptions will be good for a specified amount of time. So for most resources, the maximum length is three days, but you should always check with each resource for the supported subscription maximum length. After that time, the subscription is automatically gonna be purged from Microsoft Graph. Now this means if your application doesn't do anything after creating the subscription, it'll only receive notifications up to the expiration time that specify when the subscription was created. You should have a process that's going to monitor the subscription to ensure that it isn't expired or it isn't going to expire in a certain amount of time. If the subscription does expire, you can create a new subscription. However, you can proactively renew existing subscriptions with no interruption to notifications as long as it hasn't expired. Your application just needs to keep track of when the subscription is going to expire. Now, one option you can implement is to check the expiration timestamp on the subscription for each change notification your application receives. If the expiration is within a certain amount of time, also to handling the change notification, your application can renew the subscription. And while this solution will work in scenarios that receive a high number of change notifications, it breaks down if no changes are received in the specified subscription window. So to address this, you could have another process on a timer that verifies the notifications are received within subscription window. If not, you can assume the subscription has likely expired and it's gonna to need to be recreated. Now the recommended approach, it is to have one process that handles the change notifications and a separate one that creates, monitors, and manages and renews change notification subscriptions. Now let's look at a process to create a subscription. Now what you see here on the slide is gonna create a subscription to receive change notifications on the user's endpoint when users are updated. So what I'm doing is I'm submitting an HTTP post to the subscriptions endpoint. I've got my authentication uh, part of the, of the request is defined in the authorization header. Same thing with content type and the host and the content length. All this is all, all standard stuff. What you see is the payload. The change type I'm requesting is the updated event. The client state, that is a state value. It's some string that I come up with and that's gonna be included in every single notification that is sent back to my service. So I can create something that I'm always expecting, and I know that if that value is not in the state of when I get the notification, that somebody is trying to fool my uh, application that, uh, that, a note, that a change happened. The notification URL is the endpoint where the application, where the Microsoft Graph should send the notification to. The resource is the uh, endpoint or the collection that I wanna, be, that I wanna monitor for updated changes. And the expiration date and time, that's just the expiration of when this is going to complete. Let's talk about subscription expirations. The maximum subscription length is three days. That's for most resources. 
You can always update the subscription before it expires and so you can continue to get notifications with no gap uh, in, in service. How do we avoid this gap in service? You're gonna do that by renewing a subscription. Let's look at the process for renewing. This is done by submitting a patch request to the endpoint of the subscription. In this example here, note that the endpoint includes a specific subscription ID. I'm then setting the expiration date and time. That's the timestamp of the new expiration time that I wanna make sure that this subscription continues to stay alive. Microsoft Graph includes multiple endpoints for developers to create and manage subscriptions. You've got one for creating subscriptions, listing subscriptions, getting a subscription by a specific one, updating a subscription, and even deleting a subscription if you no longer want it. 